everyone. Welcome world language teachers. I am here with the fabulous Ellen who is here to talk to us about a really unique way to use 90% target language from day one in her classes. Ellen is an expert in using target language in her class and she has a lot of unique strategies to share with you that I think a lot of you are going to be blown away with how she does this. Ellen, you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself and the unique way that you teach? Hi, it's teaching is my second career and it is my passion. I started out as a banker in my 20s. I taught high school in my 30s. And then on my to-do list, I had get married before I turned 40. <laughs> and I found someone to marry, but he was in Pennsylvania. That was cool. So I left New England to move to Pennsylvania. And next thing I know, I'm a junior high teacher. And I keep getting demoted from ninth grade to eighth grade to seventh grade. Oh, so currently, <laughs> I teach seventh and eighth grade um, Spanish wide ability because everyone has to take the language. Mm. And my challenge a few years ago was we got a new boss who said not only does the teacher have to conduct the class in 90% target language, but the students do as well. And if oh, they don't, wow. I know. And if you don't, you get a needs improvement. Ouch. And so from that situation, which has changed, and I have a lovely, wonderful supervisor who believes more in teaching the whole child. Mm -hmm. And But from that situation, I create a system for working with wide ability students and keeping them on task. And then it turned out that the way I did it, it also created a 90% target language classroom. Oh, that's beautiful. You you have to tell everybody about this. This is why I'm so excited to have Ellen on this interview because as soon as I reached out to people looking for panelists, she told me about the way that she teaches her classes. I was like, you have to share this. Like, this is something that everybody can relate to having a classes with wide range abilities. I know I've taught classes where you, every single person in the class and I mean in the school has to take Spanish. And so you've got everybody across the board and lots of people who don't want to be there. And then you have pressure where everybody has to speak the language all the time. Like, whew. so how do you do this every day? How do you get your students to speak? So I found that I would lose them during transitions. Mm. And so I realized that I need to have tighter transition. And so I started making, I started with PowerPoint and I started making what I call a daily tech guide. And I would make a slide for each activity and I would make a slide for each transition. And then uh, I was a class advisor to the class of uh, 95 and they were holding a 20th reunion. And they invited me. And I said, okay, send me an email. And they were like, oh, profe, we don't do that, hon. That's not our generation. You have to get onto Facebook and social media. And so because I really wanted to go to this reunion, I really love these students who are now in their mid-40s, I jumped onto Facebook, even though I had avoided social media. And what I didn't know was that when you're on Facebook, people can find you. Oh, and, right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you my experience. So that's amazing. A former uh, boyfriend of mine, when I lived in Caracas, Venezuela, reached out to me to say that his grown children were really in bad situation. One was a music teacher and the school had closed and this um, videographer and graphic artist in Venezuela is not the Venezuela I knew in the 80s. And is there any way I could help them to find international help, you know, international work? So I started taking all the goofy songs that I do to help students learn. And I would send them the music, I'd send them the um, video, they would make it for me. And um, then I started to realize that I, that students respond to music. And so then I started to have um, the transitions all put to music. And so now my students, rather than telling them to be quiet, 
they are just singing the song into the next transition. Oh, it's so fun. And so it is just, it is just totally different. Oh, that's my brother who's going to help me with um, Skype. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, figured it out. <laughs> so, so anyway, so now I think a lot of times people try to get kids to be quiet, but if you are very prepared, all you want to do is get their attention for the next activity. Mm -hmm. And because I, my daily tech guide has now grown, that all the transitions are musical videos and the different activities, I've been able to add more slides to make sure that when I'm speaking in the target language, they get visual support behind me so that they can always be looking at the board to know what's going on. And so what that helps me to do is to differentiate my lesson because the student who is now, you know, tuned in and understands what I'm saying in Spanish, they're getting their needs met. Mm -hmm. And then the students who are slower to understand what I'm saying are not disengaged because they can look at the board. Yeah. And when people talk about comprehensible input, I mean, 90% target language is useless unless it's comprehensible. Right. So right. just looking at them. <laughs> right. And so to um, a lot of people have different ideas about comprehensible input. But to me, it just means they know what I'm talking and what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so by having uh, the visual behind me, the students are able to follow along with me and then eventually the blah, blah, blah becomes distinct words while the other students are definitely following. And so that has really helped me to teach a wide spectrum of um, students in the same classroom. That is so powerful, being able to have those visual cues as well as something as engaging as music. So how are you putting these two things together? What does that look like every day in your classroom? Okay. So um, every day I, um, I play the Monday song or the Tuesday song, Lunes, Martes, Mercules. I have a song that was actually made by some Cubans. They mm -hmm. had also reached out to me, some friends I knew. And so we, we, whatever day of the week it is, the kids, as they're walking into the classroom, like, oh, what is Viernes? Because that's what they're hearing. So they're actually responding in the target language. Um, I believe that uh, especially teaching uh, level one, the students need a lot of downtime built into the class. So they're allowed to talk until they hear my countdown. And the countdown video is like, Atención, la clase de español va a empezar. And, and we all count tres, dos, uno, dos, and, and And then they have to be quiet for that. So they know they have to be in their seats and doing the countdown. And then we start and I always greet them in Spanish. I have a slide. They greet me back. I ask how they are and I always use the plural form so they get used to ustedes. Mm -hmm. And then they look at the board and I have all these beautiful um, visuals that um, the Venezuelan made. And it, it always shows diversity because her family is diverse. And mm -hmm. I look at the pictures that she makes and they look just like everyone in her family. And then when I, the first thing I have to do is take attendance. I don't know about you, but I get nasty emails if I don't take attendance. And um, so actually, I think maybe I should go over to the PowerPoint that I have in my just prep during your prep. And that would kind of lay that out a little bit more visually. Sure. I'm sure people would love to see. They're probably dying, like so curious. Like, what do these look like? Okay. So let me share my screen and get over to my PowerPoint here. Okay. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So when they, how's my screen? Are you able to see it? Not yet, but I'm sure it's gonna come up soon. So this must be a real game changer for you then. What were you using beforehand? Was this, how did you decide that like, this is something that you had to do? Well, I always use PowerPoints for vocabulary, but I was also changing from being a traditional teacher mm. to um, using vocabulary more in context. But that also means having to have more visual support. Mm -hmm. So it can, 
Can you see the screen now or do I need to be doing something else? Not yet. Head over to the section where it says those, those two squares on the right. Ooh, things are happening. Oh, hey. Do we have I it? I okay. see it. Ooh, it's so beautiful. Okay, so you could so you could start with one of these days. All of these are videos, or some people use um, La Frase Secreta. You can also start with that. Oh, those are so great. Uh huh. And so then I usually I show know. the video to ah, hug me the the night, the hug it goodbye until the end of class, and then uh, this is the. Oh, wow. I don't hear you counting down. Tres, Tres dos, uno, uno, ya. 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 <laughs> and so I, I encourage people to have their own avatar, because I do, that represents me, and to take whatever your name is and put it here, and to build community by telling um, your students, like mine is called uh, Schrager Via, you know, La Pandilla de Schrager Via, to put your own name there. So when I'm asking, como están ustedes, here are some of the nice multicultural visuals that I show. They give me an answer. Uh, and then, y ahora que hacemos? Saluden a sus compañeros. So they're greeting their partners. They're asking the partners the same question. And then as we go along in the year, we add some of the Tanir expressions. And one of the ways, um, to, I never try to get kids quiet. I just try to get them to tell me they're paying attention. So I'm always asking listos or no listos. And then we have our check-in uh, where... Um, So they're, they're, and they're seeing a lot of the same target questions, vocabulary, over and over again, too, in a lot of different contexts. Yes, but it, it's part of what we're doing. And then this is how mm -hmm. I take attendance. Oh, I love that. That's authentic. And so I'm always asking, ¿Quién no está? And they'll tell me nadie, or they'll tell me who's absent. And I get attendance done right then and there. I actually do it on my phone with the Skyward program we have. And then that way, I don't get any more nasty emails. Nice. And then if, we, if you give homework, you can tell them to take out the homework. There's a fun video for this, and uh, they really like it. What I'm showing you now actually comes in my Just Prep During Your Prep um, package. So. And then what do you, you know, it's different where we are, but it could be a word of the week. I also like having uh, this activity for higher level thinking where they see a picture, they think about it, and they wonder about it. And I'm trying to get them to distinguish between what they see and what they assume. Mm, and, yeah. and, right, because that's a big thing for middle school. I think it's a big thing for ninth graders too. I use this with ninth graders as well. So I have a, uh, I do this for about three months. I have four months. I have a hundred pictures and they're always um, distinguishing between what they assume and what is actually there. That's really powerful. That's going to hit on a lot of standards with products, practices, and perspectives. Right, right. And um I also teach a Spanish 2 class, and so I have a review where they see a picture and they have to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. I'm always asking if they're ready or not ready. And we do the Repaso song, and so they know that we're about to review, and they're all singing Repaso, Repaso. And then here, and again, this is just the shell so that for people to put in the activities that they're going to do. And I, you know, I keep my activities short. Uh, they usually say it's their age and three minutes is their time limit for mm -hmm. their attention span. And then I always make sure we have a brain break. And it could be just breathing or it could be stretches. Uh, it could be someone's birthday. It could be Simon Says. There are all kinds of videos that we can do for a brain break. Uh, and then 
they see a video and it tells them to return to their seats. And a lot of times when there is a video, they all look up and they look kind of like the students in the video. Their mouths are open like, whoa, which one's it going to be now? So, so, so rather than my telling them you're doing this, the video is doing it. And so and the videos start off the same and then they change for some of the transitions. Yeah. So that keeps them wondering, OK, now what is it? And they're trying to guess it rather than going off task and using English in the transition. Yeah. And the novelty, I'm sure, of hearing a new voice, you know, because when you're the teacher, they hear you all day long, and eventually they just tune you out, Not because, probably not even because they don't like you, but just because they hear you all day long. It's, that, it's just that familiarity factor. So when you have something as engaging as a video, you've got that novelty factor right there. And especially when they see their avatars on the screen, they're mm -hmm. looking for theirs, trying to see what their avatar is doing. <laughs> Well, and the other thing is, too, is I found that I no longer lose my voice. I used to always lose my yeah. voice. Here. But these videos give me so much relief mm -hmm. that it's, 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 it's almost like I didn't notice it. And then my husband said, oh, you haven't had your horse day yet. No. So it's been fun. So then we would do a few more activities. And I can talk a lot about the spontaneous speaking. I'm really proud of those activities. But. As we begin to get to the end of the class, I do have a video for cleaning the room <laughs> because I am impressed with the number of things they're willing to leave on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, Friday, I picked up 13 pencils. I don't have to go to the gym anymore. It's just bend over and pick up, bend over and pick up. <laughs> and as much fun as that is for me, I... Now I play this, and then they all have to look around and pick up after themselves. It's a really cute video. And then this is the one that tells them to take out their agenda. They may not want to do their homework, but it's important. And I do believe in wrapping up with uh, a reflection of what you've learned. I always get very high marks when I'm being observed because of this. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So it gives them a model exactly for what they can say, sentence starters. That's very cool. This is, that was a lot of work. My goodness. <laughs> All the transitions and everything. Oh, yo veo Venezuela. And of course, hablar español. Right, and then the, there's this, um, I have a, you know, gracias por aprender, thank you for learning song. We have take that, take out your phones. You know, you're allowed to have your phones again for a minute um, because uh, they're always shut off during class, but we're a little bit more loose in between classes. There are all kinds. So, again, this is the just prep during your prep. So if you're interested in having this uh, organized approach and structure to your day but what uh, what uh, what else the other thing that i have here is on the back let me see if i can go to view uh slide sorter so let's say you're prepping your lesson mm -hmm. and you're saying what am i going to do today well here's the special person uh here's reading this is my spontaneous speech um for elementary school they might go to the carpet you might have a scaffolding activity. You might have um, a bingo or uh, a writing activity or get out the computer, get out the computers, put them back, charge them. So I have another 50 or 60 things. And all I do is take these and I would drag these to the activity. Mm -hmm. And so this is how you can lesson plan without it being such a burden because it's all there. And you can just, whatever your activity is, you make a slide. You can make a transitional slide if you want. But you can just go back here and pull these up too. And then these all have links. So, for example, if you're interested in doing more with La Persona Especial, you click here. Love it. And, and here is a link to someone's blog about La Persona Especial. And so there's a lot of um, support here 
for creating an interesting class. And, you know, I'm a visual person, so it just helps me. Whenever I have an assessment, it's the Adios Libros. If we, um, so this would be for my assessment. This would be, I do random partners of the week. So that's what we usually do on a Monday. Um, some people like to do the one word image. I haven't had as much success with that, but you can always go and this will take you to a link. This will take you to a link. Oh, I'm not in it, but this will take you to a link um, about this activity. So it helps by a couple of things that aren't obvious, and I didn't realize it until after I started doing this, is that by having all these activities, it frees me up just to drag my, um, to drag the slide to the activity and to flesh it out a little bit. It has minimized my lesson planning. But what's really important to me now is that because it is such a scripted lesson, I actually have more time to be emotionally available to my students because I'm not fumbling with anything. Mm. If I have audio from the book, the audio is going to be there. For whatever supplies me for the activity, the students are going to see what we're doing. And so therefore, when someone's having a problem or someone doesn't understand something or there's something else going on with someone's friend, I'm actually able to be more available because I am not concerned with the delivery of the lesson because I just know I have to get through my slides. So all of these slides would not be included in the daily one. It would just help me with my planning. And then at the end, I have some of the uh, free uh, videos, like this one is really cute. And then this is what, um, let me see, if you're reviewing help, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> So I have just found that these, the scripting of the class, although it may at first seem like, oh, it's going to be too controlled, what really happens is that you're free of worry or concern and can really tune in with your students. So unique. So unique. I'm sure your students absolutely love it. So where can people go if they are interested in using what you've just presented to us? Where can they get it? So I have a blog called Minute by Minute Spanish. And uh, there's a, you can just go to the blog and be just prep during your prep. And there are all these videos showing how to use this. Uh, and I also have a, a TPT store, which is called Minute by Minute Spanish with Ellen Schrager. My, the proceeds from my store, the net proceeds of my store, all that goes to support three Venezuelan families. So what you're seeing here has what has helped me um, to really enjoy my profession. You know, I've been in the classroom over 30 years, and it, and it is easy to get burnt out with all the demands that are on us. Mm -hmm. But... Since I started teaching this way, I have, and I'm always surrounded by music. I'm always surrounded by movement. I have just found that I have more joy in my, in my daily class. And, um, and I also know that I'm helping uh, the children of my friend to um, survive this horrible time in Venezuela. And um, on my website, on Minute by Minute Spanish, you can see videos of the um, children, I uh, send them boxes of clothing and school supplies, and and you, there's a video of them opening. It's like a, a Christmas day for them. Is that? Oh it? wow! And, but everything is used. So all my friends send me used things, and then I ship them down to them. That's incredible. Well, I'm sure that people will be ecstatic to see ways that they can use this in their own classroom. And we are so lucky to have this 
very new and unique way to incorporate target language into our classrooms and to make sure that they are, that it's really being used 90%. No. Ernie's also very excited about it as well. The whole family's just really excited. And my, and my pups are responding to the barking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a global phenomenon. Target language. It's a global phenomenon. Well, Ellen, thank you so much for being here with us, and uh, I am so thankful that you were here to share this with us. I have a million ideas for how I can use transitions better, and uh, some videos that I know, and I know you also have French ones too, right? Because I, I know I teach both. Yes, I have them in French, uh, Italian, Mandarin, German, oh, wow. and Latin. There you go. The whole the whole world is covered. It truly is a global phenomenon. Thank you so much for being here. We are lucky to have this new perspective on target language teaching. Thank you for what you do for the global world language community, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Devin. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>